So allow me to share the, the notes on the screen. Then we can. So there's no need for you to, to multitask there. Yes, so I'll share that on your screen. So you just double tap on that. So now, um, someone to confirm that the screen share is okay. Someone to confirm for me that what I've shared in the screen is visible. Just thank you, thank you, that is okay. So now, uh, we have a challenge. We have a challenge with this particular topic. Uh, this particular topic, IFRS 17. What you need to know is that this is the new standard, very new. It is the new standard and even cast that they have not examined. Two, people are still gambling, gambling with uh, the application of this standard, of which we are waiting to see how the audit and financial statements for the year 2023 will appear. And I therefore give you a task to check for me on your Google platform the effective, you can just check effective date of IFRS 17. Can someone check and uh, share? One person? We will share first. Effective date of IFRS 17. When it is effective. Or when did it became effective? Someone can tell me, you can check, then you tell me the dates when this color became effective for application. So someone has shared, uh -huh. let me check. First joy, first January, 2023, yes. So this standard is effective from first January, 2023. Remember, we are in 2023. Even the audited financial statements Audited financial statement, the corporate, uh, sorry, the statutory audited accounts for 2023 have not been done. Is when we are preparing now to start the audits in the, in the next financial year. So uh, there is a lot of issues. This is not the standard which was being used for insurance companies. We were applying IFRS number four. IFRS four is the one which was being applied for insurance contracts. So since it came to, when it came to, uh, in the picture, Kassler moved, moved this topic from intermediate section three to the advanced section five, which it tends to be very complex. Though they have not, they have not examined it. I don't know what they're waiting for. And it can be examined anytime, anytime. They came, uh, how many topics? There were like three topics which were pulled from down there. IFRS 17 on insurance. They also pulled IS number 30 on banking. They also pulled IS number seven. IS number 17. Yeah, on, uh, no, IFRS 16, sorry. IFRS 16 on leases. So they pull IFRS 16, 17, and IF number 30 on banking. Uh, banking we did, and even IFRS 16 on leases we did. Those two have already been examined by Kasten. But I don't know why they are taken for the two semesters, they have not examined this one here since it came to effect. So it can be examined any time, but if they don't, this time I know they will bring it next year. Maybe people are still waiting to see how the auditors, the auditors will go and bought the, the books. So we we don't even have questions for, for this topic. I just gambled with some small, small questions to see how we can do the presentation. 
just in case, just in case. So I want us to go through uh, whatever notes I have here. So uh, we are I could type I IFRS 17. So we are going through the notes. IFRS 17 establishes the principle for the recognition, measurement, presentation, and disclosure of insurance contracts. The objective of IFRS is to ensure, of IFRS 17 is to ensure that an entity provides relevant information that faithfully represents such contracts. Such contracts. Key definitions. So we have some terminologies which we need to familiarize with. One, insurance contract. Insurance contract is a contract under which one party, the insurer, accept significant insurance risks from other from another party, that is the policy holder, by agreeing to compensate the policy holder if a specified and certain future event adversely affects the policy holder. Sure. Then we have portfolio of insurance contracts. These are insurance contracts subject to similar risks and managed together. So if you have um, insurance contracts which are subjected to similar risks and they are brought under one basket, then we call them portfolio. Remember portfolio, which you normally do in financial management. So portfolio just means the collection or combination. Then we have what is called the contractual service margin. That one right for me. I know, I know key areas which would be very important. So I'll read what we have there, and then I will try to bring it down for to you something, at least something which you can write. So contractual service margin, known as CSM, is a component of the carrying amount of an asset or liability for a group of insurance contracts representing the uncertain profits that the entity will recognize as it provides services under the insurance contract in the group. That one noted for me because I know how uh, I know it is key. So contractual service margin, popularly known as CSM. CSM, those are now the new areas in the new standard. CSM, you can say, is the net profit, is the net profit that the company, and the company has the insurance firm, is the net profit that the company, the company expects to earn, the company is expected, sorry, the company is expected to earn, to earn over the years, over the years, as it provides, as it provides the insurance coverage, as it provides the insurance coverage, as it provides the insurance coverage. That is what we call contractual service margin. So the expected profit, and you know the insurance firms, of course, they are in profit making at the end of the day. And how will they determine the profit? They will check the gross premium, then maybe they estimate, they can do an estimation of the expected cash outflow. They come up with the risk adjustment because of the future. Then they can discount those future cash flows. Then they determine how much profit they expect. So the profit you expect in an insurance contract, and I'm not sure, but I think maybe we have one, two, three people who are here and who are maybe accountants from the insurance firms, and they know what they are going as far as this standard is concerned. So the contractual service margin is the profit which the insurance firm expects to receive from the insurance coverage or insurance contract. So when we'll be talking about CSM, you just know that is the expected profits. Next, back to the notes. 
insurance risks. These are the risks other than financial risks, other than financial risks, transferred from the holder of contract to the insurer. Of course, we normally transfer our we normally transfer our risks to the insurance firm. The risk that maybe the fire will damage our asset, the risk that may be natural calamities, all those risks. So the risk which we transfer to the insurance firm, we call it the insurance risks. Then we have fulfillment cash flows. Fulfillment cash flows. So fulfillment cash flows, these are the expected present value of future cash flows, less the present value cash inflows that will arise as the entity fulfills insurance contracts, including the risk adjustment for non-financial risks. Story Mingi, Biori Story Mingi Sana and Neza Kathirisha Mutu. So when we talk of fulfillment cash flows, is the difference. You know, in insurance, there is always the cash inflow and the cash outflow. The cash inflow, the major part of the cash inflow is the premiums, the premiums which they receive. That is the main cash inflow to them. And the cash outflow is the claims. These people, at one point, they will have to claim. The only issue is that we don't know when the claim will arise, but the fact remains the claim will be there in future. But now you see the claim being in future, you need to do what we call discounting the determination of present value of the expected future cash inflows because premium is not one unless in, uh, in very rare instances premium is normally spread over the over the policy holders uh, we call it the insurance duration so the amount you expect to receive that is the cash inflow you discount to present you discount the expected claims then the difference between the present value of the expected future cash inflows and the expected future cash outflows is called fulfillment cash flows. Then we have risks adjustment for non-financial risks. Uh, before even we go to the risk adjustment for non-financial risk, that one non-financial risk, I want us to know what is risk adjustment. So write for me down first. Risk adjustment, risk adjustment, risk adjustment, you say is an explicit, is an explicit, is an explicit adjustment, is an explicit adjustment to reflect, explicit adjustment to reflect. Explicit adjustment to reflect the uncertainty. To reflect the uncertainty. The uncertainty. In timing. The uncertainty in timing. And in amount. In timing and in amount of future cash flows, of future cash flows, with the keyword being uncertainty, the keyword being uncertainty. I full stop. So when we talk of risk adjustment, check here. You are receiving my 100,000 and the claim might even rise after 20 years. So when you discount, when you discount the present value, always there is that variation. There is that variation. Uh, the, the current fair value and the discounted future value when the claim might be settled. Yesterday, when we were doing consolidated cash flow, there was this question whereby there was 
deferred consideration on the acquisition of a subsidiary. When you defer, there is always the finance cost for uh, for deferment or for the deferral. When you defer, there is that interest factor. And you saw us calculating that interest factor as part of finance cost. So when these people are intending to settle the claims in future, we need to discount. And when you discount, the present value will differ with the current market value. That variation, which in quotes I can term it as the finance cost, though they are not, they don't trigger a finance cost per se, we need to adjust for it. It is the risk. That is now the risk factor which comes in. So the risk adjustment is just an adjustment you are making for the uncertainty of the future amount and all future timings when the amounts will be paid so that you be cautious. You be cautious of anything which might happen in the future. Even banks, when you borrow loans, they normally do what is called risk adjustments to cater for the uncertainty in timing and also in amounts. And also, without failing to mention this because I might forget, for the discounting, and this one I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going very practical, uh, who are the regulators of insurance firms? This is the I mean, who are the regulators of these insurance firms? I think, yeah, it, it should be IRA. IRA, I believe. So the regulators for the insurance firms are questioning the discount, the discount rates for determining the present value of the expected future cash, mostly cash outflow. Because insurance firms, if they are given the leeway, they might interfere. And remember, any interference, you know, the when you discount that finance cost factor, that risk is normally tax allowable. It's allowed for tax purposes. That's something you you really need to know. And now it might interfere with the with the KRA, let me be specific to Kenya. It might interfere with the KRA as to the tax base, which is subject to taxation. So IRA, which is the regulators of these insurance firms, what they have done, they have capped the present the discount rates to be applied in determination of the present value. And the discounting factor is capped at the, at the interest rates for the bonds, the bonds, the government bonds, the rate at which the bonds are trading, that is the average rate which you are supposed to apply for discounting purposes. So like right now, when maybe we traded with you in August, in August this year, and maybe we traded in USD, you can know the average. The average from August to now is around 145, 141, 150, and all that. So at least if you range between that space, you are at least uh, you are doing something which is accurate. So the insurance firms have been advised to apply the, the rate for the bonds. So on that particular day, you are discounting. Check the bonds are trading at what percentage. So the discounting factor is not for the entity but they have been directed to use the ones which are being used in the stock markets. So CMA and IRA came to that argument that insurance firms should do that. So that one I think uh, was very important for me to mention. So when we talk of risk back to our handouts, when we talk of risk adjustment for non-financial risks, this is the compensation an entity requires for bearing the uncertainty about the amount and timing of the cash flows arising from non financial risks as the entity fulfills insurance contracts. That's more or less the same with what we are saying. Now let's go to recognition. Now let's go to recognition. Um, an entity should recognize group of insurance contracts, should recognize group of insurance contracts at the beginning of coverage period. At the beginning of coverage period, master that, and the beginning of the coverage period, and the date when the first payment from the policy holder becomes due. Correct. So insurance, see at Unamoya to premium to account, we should agree how much. The agreeing point is called 
uh, how do they call it? Underwriting. They do the underwriting. So at the underwriting stage, underwriting is now when they do all those things, what they're supposed to do and all those stuff. So underwriters knows better you know, what they do together with the actuaries. So they need to recognize that amount immediately that they spread. They spread the expected uh, premiums over the period. They determine all those expected profits and the rest. So um, when it comes to measurement, so recognition of Elizua, how do we recognize insurance contracts? They are recognized at the beginning. All the questions should be when. They are recognized at the beginning of the coverage period and the date when the policyholder, uh, the policyholder becomes not the first payment, yes. The date when the first payment becomes due. So you don't wait until you receive this when you recognize. You take the whole amount, you spread it over at the underwriting stage. Let's go to measurement. That was recognition. On initial recognition, an entity should measure the group of insurance contracts as being the total of fulfillment of cash flows and its contractual and its contract service margin. Of course, that is what you measure. You measure that what you remember. I told you fulfillment cash flows is the difference between the cash inflow and the cash outflow. And we might have many, but when I talk of cash inflow, just look at the premiums. Cash outflow, just look at the, the claims. So what they need to measure in the books, they need to bring the fulfillment of cash flows and the contract service margin, the CSM. The contract service margin is the expected profit. So I want you to write for me something small on measurement. There's something IFRS 17 is coming up with, which I think we need to take into place. Key measurement methods. Right there, subtropic. Key measurement methods. Key measurement methods. Under IFRS 17. Key measurement methods under IFRS 17. So we have three, three measurement methods whether to spread it through, whether to do what, and what are the criteria for knowing you should pick this and that one there. So we have three of them. Number one, number one is known as GMM. There is a model or method known as GMM. GMM in full means general measurement model. General measurement Measurement model general measurement model. Then we have PAA. We have PAA, which is the premium premium allocation. Premium allocation approach. Premium allocation approach. Premium allocation approach. And the last one, we have what is called uh, here in the company, VAF. Variable. Variable fees. No, in a part, VFA. VFA, known as variable. Variable fees approach. So at the beginning of the period, not period, when you are doing underwriting, underwriting is when now the determination of premiums, what are you, those, all those things, they should be measured using either of those models. We have the uh, GMM. We have the PA, the premium allocation approach, or VFA for variable fees approach. So 
Um, how will I bring this? Right for me here in the form of a table. Of course, I know if you want the board, you double click the white board. So right for me here, GMM PA BFA like that. So Uh, number one, application. Application. This one is mandatory. Mandatory. PA is optional. PA is optional. This one here relates to life. So it is mandatory to life, life insurance. Life insurance. Number two, period or duration. Duration, this one relates to long term. Long term insurance contracts. So general measurement model relates to long term. The one spent for three, four, five, 10, 20 years. So you are looking when you are doing the allocation for long term, then you use what is called general measurement model, then premium allocation for short term. Short term insurance contracts. This one still I would say relates to life. Life. But all of them you discount. And this one is you discount even this one because the short term does not mean it is one year. All of them are subject to discounting, which is present value. So what am I talking about? Uh, when measuring them in the financial statements, you sit down as accountants, group of accountants in this insurance firm. Insurance firm is one accountant. Roger. Yesterday I was with a friend of mine. Uh, he works for medium, do I call it? Not small, small enterprise, but medium. He told me they are in their company, of course, private company, there are 51 accountants. So I wondered how that's a very big number. 51 accountants, what do they even do? So you as a group of accountants, you sit down. This person wants to ensure sheep, boats, but also insurance. They are houses and your tenants. So you check the nature of the items you want to insure, the risks which are involved, and all that, and the premium which you expect. So for you to apply the PAA, you must meet the, some criteria on the threshold. Mostly, the entity will say anything five years and below, those are deemed to be short term. So what you do, you just take the premium, then you allocate it along, along uh, during the insurance period. This one is pure for life. When you spread your discounts, that one is called variable fees and cost. While general measurement model, this is the main one. Actually, this is the major because it relates to long term. Most insurance contracts are long term. So Examine the media result one here. State and explain the three measurement models of insurance contracts and IFRS 17. So we have the general measurement model, the premium allocation approach, and the variable fees approach. So this one you just tell it to them. This is a mandatory approach for all long-term insurance contracts. Uh, this one here is optional, but it's applicable is applicable for short-term insurance contracts.
variant the FIFA approach uh, is mandatory to all life insurance contracts. As brief as that, as brief as that, without bringing a lot of stories. So we are still seeing how this standard is moving on with us. Then now back to our notes, back to our notes. Subsequent measurements, subsequent measurement. So on subsequent measurement, the carrying amount of group of insurance contracts at the end of each reporting period should be the sum of the liability for the remaining coverage period and the liability for the incurred claims. So in future, you check how much liability has been covered plus what is remaining, then that is what you need to determine in the financial statements. Then we have premium allocation. This is an approach where the entity spreads the expected premiums from the insured parties over the coverage period. We have explained the PAA, the premium allocation. Premium forms the major source of income. Yeah, so for insurance firms, for insurance firms, premiums becomes the main source of income or revenue. Then we have reinsurance contracts. Reinsurance contracts is the contract in which the insured firm insures itself with another insurance firm. That one you know. So when you when an insurance firm insures itself with another insurance firm, then we talk of reinsurance contract. The main objective is to spread the risks. The main objective is to spread the risk so that risk is going up on a share. Reinsurance premiums will reduce the expected premiums payable under the same contract. Definitely. Reinsurance contract gives rise to commission on reinsurance accepted and ceded. Those two are very important. Reinsurance commission accepted and ceded. Accepted is the commission you pay to reinsurance firm. If there is any commission insurance and a LIPA reinsurance firm, that is called commission accepted. Ceded is the commission they receive. Reinsurance can also pay them commission. So commission receivable is called ceded. You will have a cash on somewhere. Commission receivable is ceded, while commission payable is called uh, accepted. So to the notes, commission on reinsurance accepted. This is commission payable to an insurance firm calculated as a percentage of premiums receivable in insurance contract. Yeah, so accepted you pay based on commission you have received. Sorry, based on premium you have received. So when you receive premiums from a reinsurance firm, when you pay premiums, you give them a commission. So you pay commission based on premiums you have received, not that place. While commission on reinsurance accepted is the commission receivable from reinsurance firm based on premiums payable under the same contract. So commission seeded, you receive based on the premiums you have given out. So you give premiums, get commission. While accepted, you pay commission based on the premiums you have received. Where she come on, a lot of person that where you are dealing. The one which is easier to master is accepted. People normally accept to pay, they don't accept to receive. They expect, they accept to pay. So just know that accepted is payable. We have accepted to pay. So we pay commission based on the premiums which you have given us. Then presentation. Presentation in the statement of financial position. Before I go to presentation, there is one terminology which I need to bring up very fast. Write it there. Call reserves for an expired risks. Reserves. For an expired 
risk. That was IFRS number four. So this one has been altered. The name has changed. The name has changed. So in exam, in case they bring the the reserve for an expired risk is no longer there. Uh, they will call it liability. They will call it liability for the remaining, for the remaining coverage. IFRS 17. So IFRS 17, we'll be talking of uh, we'll be talking of the liability for the remaining coverage. So uh, don't expect to get the reserve and expired risks. But now what are they? Now that is another question. What are they? The name changed, yes, in the new standard. Uh, Linda, can someone Send me a picture of subsequent measurement. How? See, you can use your handout for group. You can summa to work home. Linda, I'm a. Linda, see your handout. You go to work. Send you your e. subsequent measurement. You go up. Send you this one here. So the handout is in the group. So you can log in now. So I'm here. I'm here. All right. So what are they? So before we write, I need to bring you up to speed. Reserve on expired risks, the way it was being mentioned in the old standard. Actually, they were calling it also, uh, IFRS was calling it an unpremium reserve. That was another name, an unpremium reserve. So, you know, uh, insurance is a very tricky, is a very tricky kind of business. Mutu anakuja leo umemuishwa, anakaa kikontribute kidogo. Maybe ya na contribute kwa leona msichana murembo hapo. Uyo msichana, sikuizi ya fanyi kazi yako, anata kikontribute kwa hiyo fama. They disappear. So there is a lot of uncertainties. A lot, a lot of uncertainties. So to, to be, what we audit wana semanga, be skeptical. So to be, uh, professional skepticism. So to be skeptical, what you can do, what they should do, they make a provision. They make a provision, a reserve, in case these people will not pay this premium. Because I will stop paying premium, then I go there and say, I want to in Missouri. I need my, I need my work. Sarena Wali. Yes. So they come and say, fine. Give me my surrender value. I'm no longer interested. You will have to pay them. You will have to pay them. So the amount which you are setting aside to cater for future, future claims, we call it the liability for the remaining coverage. Initially, we used to treat this one under equity. Currently, now this one is being treated as liability in the financial statement. We were treating it as a reserve in the equity, but now it is not transferred to equity. It is treated as part of um, part of liabilities. So you can just say something small. You say expected expected amount expected amount to be paid to be paid expected amount to be paid. As claims in future, in future calculated, calculated as a percentage of net premiums, net premiums, percentage of net premiums. Yes. So examiner will be. What shall I put in my pen?
Okay. All right, so calculated as a percentage of the net premiums. So examine that from the past, those past, past question, they were not telling you how much, they just tell you, uh, though it was being called reserve or an expired risk or an earned premium reserves. They were just saying an earned premium reserves is at 10%. Then they don't tell you 10% of what? On a quarter to apple. So I want you to know, you analyze for the whole period, for the whole period, for the whole period, you analyze all the premiums you receive. All, all the premiums you receive, then the liability for the remaining coverage is a percentage of the net premiums which you have received. So that's how you go about it. All right, let's go back to our handouts. Let's go back to our handouts. Presentation in the statement of financial position. Presentation in the statement of financial position. Uh, an entity should present separately in the statement of financial position, the carrying amount of the group of financial position, the carrying amount of group of, uh, repetition, the carrying amount of insurance contract issued that are assets, insurance contract issued that are liabilities, insure, insurance contract that are assets, reinsurance contract that are liabilities. Fine. So in the in the balance sheet, in the balance sheet, you have to tell us the insurance contract which are assets and which are liabilities. Then you tell us also re reinsurance which are assets and insurance which are liabilities. Something which is very important about the presentation of their balance sheet as per the new standard is that they're supposed to present their balance sheet on on a net asset basis. That one you can go somewhere. Uh, somewhere They present their financial position on net asset basis. They try to check the working capital component. So when we prepare a balance sheet on net asset basis, means you take all the assets, then you subtract liabilities so that we can be able to see the working capital. Then from there, you tell us how they finance those net assets. So the finance are now the equity components. So mostly, their balance sheets will start with the cash and cash equivalents. So you start with cash in liquidity. In fact, that's the one I was looking for. They, their balance sheet should be in liquidity sequence. Liquidity sequence, just the same as banks. Banks also will prepare in liquidity sequence. You start with the one which is more liquid, in which case is the cash and cash equivalent, going down to the least liquid. Then you work on net assets. Net asset means get all the assets, subtract the liabilities, then you show us how they financed those assets. Recognition and presentation. Okay. Just a
Sorry for that. So um, recognition and presentation in the profit stop loss. That is the statement of financial performance. They can call it that name as well. An entity should recognize in its statement of profit and loss an insurance service results. Insurance service results. This comprises insurance revenue and insurance service expenses. Yes. So insurance service results comprises the insurance revenue, then also insurance service expenses. Also, you will bring insurance finance income or finance expenses. Note, insurance funds are expected to have sufficient reserve for an earned premiums, the reserve for unexpired risks. This result should be computed as a percentage of net premiums for a given period. You know, you will shower and say, this one, that one there. Disclosures, even disclosures are very key. Those ones, like a machine. Disclosures is anything you can be asked by exam at any time. An entity should disclose both quantitative and qualitative information about the amount recognized in financial statements that arise from insurance contracts, the significant judgments made in the preparation of the financial statements, nature and extent of the risks that arise from insured controls or insured parties. So just give us the nature and extent of the risks arising, the judgments you made in the preparation of the books, and the amounts which you in this process you can give so many things of your choice. Even the model, you can talk about the models and the rest. So now I have an illustration here, which actually that is what delayed me uh, when, for the class. I want us to check this illustration just in case. So I will only do the first one for you to know how the format goes. So you can multitask the board and the, the question, or I remove the screen share. You use your phone, which is better. Do I need the screen share? Yeah, it will help me because I need it. I hope you can work better with the screen when I share the screen and the whiteboard at the same time, because I don't have that paper. So if I rely there, I think it is quite better for me for time purposes. Yes, it goes out. So let's check on that question. So right here, illustration. There. So let's read the question. It says, Tango Insurance Company Limited engages in general insurance business. Okay, so that is not life. Meaning you cannot apply the VFA, the variable fees uh, approach is not applicable. Actually for general, general all general tends to be long term. You will apply GMM. So, the following trial balance was extracted from its books as of 31st March 2014. Uh, there's something I want to tell you before we start that question. Before to answer you, Swali, I want to tell you something. Andika Kochini, steps, though I don't know whether it can be asked everywhere or if it's applicable, but being a new standard, anything. Anything I come across, I need to share. So right for me, there are steps, steps, steps. It is of accounting, not for accounting for insurance firms. Step for accounting for insurance firms.
Tuare as arms. Number one, number one step, determine the expected cash inflow. Determine the expected cash inflow. Unet and take up premiums. The expected cash inflows are the premiums. So that is the start point done by the underwriter. So determine the expected cash inflows. Number two, determine the expected cash outflows. Expected cash outflows. Claims, those are claims, those are claims. Number three, discount the cash flows. For cash flows, discount those two up there. So discount the cash flows. That is the third step. You discount the cash flows. So cash inflow, cash outflow, you discount. Then number four, apply risk adjustment. Apply the risk adjustment. So risk adjustment, of course, uh, the regulators, IRA and CMA for Iskizana, we are using the rate for the bonds. That is the one you use for the discounting uh, purposes as well as adjusting the risks that these people may fail. Finally, determine, determine the CSM. CSM is the contract service margin, the expected profits. The contract service margin. Full stop. Full stop. So those ones, that is the flow of how it should go. But all those are done by the underwriter. Accountants will not do the uh, will not do that. Once we determine, that is when now they forward to the accountants up there. So the accountants will determine. So if you shut up the on the right, that is now when the accountant will now start by determining the, the, the insurance revenue. You determine the insurance revenue, the insurance service expenses, and all those other factors. So let's go to our question. Let's go to our question. Uh, so I read, Tengo Insurance Company Limited engages in general insurance business. The following trial balance was extracted from its books as of 31st March 2014. So we have direct premiums received. Direct is the one they have received from the insured parties. Then we have reinsurance premiums received. Insurance firms cannot reinsurance firms can also pay them. Then we have reinsurance premiums paid, sundry debtors, bank balance, and earned premium. The word reserve is missing there. Claims outstanding. So those are claims which have not had not been settled at the beginning of the year. Then we have claims paid, legal cost incurred on claims survey expenses relating to claims. Then we have bad debts, investment in shares, free old property, motor vehicles at netbook value, machinery and equipment at netbook value, furniture at netbook value. Then, Patrick Then audit fees, director's fees, depreciation on fixed assets, then we have management expenses, sundry creditors, investment income, ordinary share capital, share premium, profit and loss account balance, that is the retained earnings, premiums outstanding. Note number one, additional information. Premiums outstanding as at 31st March 2014, that is the close of the year, 
amounted to 1.5 and 700 for marine insurance and fire insurance, respectively. Claims intimated and outstanding. Intimated are just claims which are in the. You know, when there is a claim, there must be due diligence. Eh? We say that you very young, blah, blah. They must do uh, due diligence of that. So they, you have not the claim, but the claim has not been approved. So there is a slim difference between claims intimated and claims outstanding, but all of which are accounted for the same way. Intimated, you have not a claim. The claim has not been even assessed. It has not been approved. Outstanding, are claims which have been approved but have not yet been paid. Those are outstanding. They have not been paid. But intimated, you have not the claim, but uh, nothing, it has not even gone to the approval stage. So the fact remains, it is a liability to be settled. Because in accounting, we are told if you anticipate a liability or a loss, you need to bring it in the books immediately. So intimated, they are outstanding, but which have not been, have not undergone the approval stages. Outstanding, we, they have undergone through everything. Accounting treatment is one and the same. They are all accounted for as liabilities. So claims intimated and outstanding amounted to 750 for marine and 480 for fire insurance. And earned premiums, that is reserved for unexpired risks, which we are not going to use that name anymore, is maintained at 100% and 50% of the net premiums for marine insurance and fire insurance, respectively. Commission on both reinsurance ceded and insurance accepted is at the rate of 5% of the premiums. The directors have proposed a dividend of 10% on the outstanding share capital as at 31st March 2014. The tax rate applicable is 30%. Required revenue accounts for both marine and fire insurance. So we need to determine the insurance revenue, then profit and loss account, then statement of financial position. So let's kick off. So call it table insurance. So for the year ended 31st March 2014. So from the arrangement, marine comes first, then fire. Marine fire, killing seven thousands. This is how the presentation should be.
So my students are ready. So we kick off. So the analysis goes this way. Remember how we went about it. We started by saying we would analyze the cash inflows. The cash inflows is the premiums in this case. So start with the premiums. Premiums. Start with the premiums. So premiums, anything calling itself premiums to let the upper. So let's go from the top. From top, you are seeing direct premiums received. So direct premiums received. I hope it's the first item in the trial balance. That is 45 and 35. So this is 45, this is 35. Like that. Then there is reinsurance premiums received. Reinsurance premiums received. So from insurance, we received that is 12 and 8. That is 12 and Eight. We have reinsurance premiums paid. Those ones you subtract. Reinsurance premiums. Premiums paid. So premiums paid, 800 and 500. So 800 and 500. Those ones you subtract. You subtract. Then we have what else down there? And other premiums, you watch I got it double. That is a reserve. Let it wait a bit. Claims, claims, no. The only premium we have, the last item in the trial balance, check the last item in the trial balance. Also check not one. Also check not one. So in note one, additional information number one, in the additional information number one, premiums outstanding. Outstanding means we haven't received. So premiums outstanding are the 31st March 2014, and that is where we are closing. We are closing on 31st 2014, 15 and seven. So marine was 15, uh, fire was 700. Then the last, the last item in the trial balance, we also had premiums outstanding 1st April 2013. So that was opening. So I want to use marine only to explain. Marine opening in the trial balance was 800. Then closing marine in not one is 1500. So what goes to the, for the year should be the difference between the closing and the opening. You know, we had outstanding, outstanding, outstanding at the beginning and outstanding at the end. So it means the increase or decrease is what we take to PL. So what does it mean? In the PL, you will consider the closing minus the opening. Closing minus opening. So it will be this way. Um, you can say closing. Premiums, that is the ones which we did not receive in not one, 1,500 and 700. Then you less, you less opening, opening premiums in the trial balance, 800, 700. But now this one you subtract so that you get the increase or decrease. So by so doing, it means you are just adding to all this the difference for the year. So that is what will give you, what will give you the next don't cross it. Money funger. Money funger is good if 
that is where I also. So this one will give you the net premiums. Can you give me the two answers for marine and fire? Give me the two answers. Uh -huh. I'm seeing the answers there, 56 and 38, thank you, 56 and 38. Then the rule, the rule of the thumb is, thou shalt not eat everything. Of whatever you have received as premiums, kuna kizungu ya Kenya, tunatenga, lazima tutenge, you put aside some funds to cater for future. Because you don't know, wanaela kataka kulipa, what will you do? So you have to set aside some funds. So the ones you are setting aside, you subtract. So you will come here and say, let me adjust my camera like that. Liability, liability for the remaining, liability for the remaining coverage, liability for the remaining coverage, check additional note number three, so check note three, check note number three. Liability for the remaining coverage. Yes. So liability for the remaining coverage is what in that old standard we were calling an earned premium reserves. So the earned premium reserves is what we are calling liability for the remaining coverage so that we don't eat everything. They said in not free, it was to be 100% and 50% of the net premiums. So that means of what you have received as net, this one you set aside everything. No amount should be utilized. So that is the liability for the remaining coverage. You subtract the whole amount of 56. Here, 50% 50 is 19. 50% of that rate is 19. Then there is, you know, this is always a provision you are making. Increase or decrease in provision is what we bring in P and L. So at the end of the year, the provision is being made on the net premiums. Last year, there is another provision we made. So if you made a provision last year to get up on liabilities, we consider that one to be unutilized funds. If you make a provision, then you don't utilize that provision. What does it become? you reverse it back in the financial statements as part of income. So when you check T-balance, check your trial balance somewhere, somewhere where, I throw it somewhere. Here, I don't know whether you are seeing my cursor. This one here, the unearned premiums. The unearned premiums as first April 2013. So at the beginning of the year, remember April 2013 is the start of this year. At the beginning of the year, there was a provision they had made you know this provision is from last year and it's still appearing in the books. So that one is considered as unutilized, unutilized funds. It's a provision which we have made, but I just make up. I just make up. So you bring it here. You bring it here. We can call it.
So we can call it liability for income. Let me call it for income. Income claims. Or expired. Those are expired risks. These are risks which have expired. Liability for income claims in brackets expired. Expired risk. That one you add back. You add them back to the books. And even if they try to balance them on the credit, so it means they are income. So this is 48. Those risks have expired, so they are unutilized. 25. Full stop. So now, what you get at this stage, what you get at this stage is the growth. Uh, Gross insurance revenue. So this one will cost cancels this. So we just remaining with 48. 19 plus 25 is how much? 19 plus 44. So call this space A. Call it A. That is the gross insurance revenue. You can call it A. Alright. So that is projection of the cash inflow. So we need to go to the cash outflow, which is claims. So let's go to claims, unless somebody has a question here. I want to change the camera. So we go to claims. Let's go to claims. So you just proceed down there. Wait, well, it's a continuation. So it's not that you claim I lack space. So you just write claims only. You just proceed. I know you have a space. All right, so anything calling itself claims, that is the expected cash outflow. So from top, Direct, no, really, no, insurance, no, sundry, no, bank, no, and aunt, no. Claims outstanding. The first one you are seeing is claims outstanding first April 2013. That is opening. So what you need to do, take the closing claims minus this opening here. So cl closing claims is in note two, additional information number two. So you come here and say, um, Closing claims. Closing claims on 31st December 2014. 2014. That is note number two. 750 and 480. 750 and 480. Then you subtract the opening so that you get the increase or decrease. So opening, I saw it in the trial balance. So opening, opening claims. First, no, this one is March, sorry. First April, 2013. Uh, claims outstanding, I'm seeing 800. And 540, 800 and 540, 800 and 540, so that you only get the increase or decrease. 
So I just leave it like that. Then we bring others. So we want the total claims. Ah, yeah. There was claims paid. I can see claims paid. Now, because I've been picking the figures just to moderate the class, how much is the claims paid, which you can see? Thank you, 2470 and 18. 2470 and 18. You know, subtract, you know we want the claims as total, cash out. This one we just subtracted to get the increase or decrease. Another one, legal cost in card of claims. So legal cost on claims. Legal cost on claims, it was only marine, 320. 320, nothing. Then, debts, insurance, whatever, whatever, nothing. Management, sanitary investment, what, what, what. I don't see anything. Unless there is something you are seeing, you know, I can also miss. Kuna kitu meona, and I've not captured. Please allow me to know. Legal cost is 180 and uh, 130. What's on your own? Legal cost 180 and 130. I mean, 320 make a happen. Oh, E320 is survey. Survey expenses. Thank you. So, you know, I get a leg up. You got a leg up and you're ready to end. 180. 130. Then there was survey. Survey expenses. So you survey your, your claims relating to claims 320 on marine. Thank you. So that was your only concern. So you can bring here the totals. You can capture the totals smoothly. So you call it total claims. Total claims cash outflow. Cash outflow. Then you will call it B. I'm waiting your two answers. Thank you, 2920, 1870. 2920, 1870. Thank you. So those are the claims to be paid. In that order, in that order, we go for commission. In another level, 
you have to obey that law. Premiums, when determining the insurance revenue, is premiums followed by claims. You go to commission, then you finish with any other expense. So, so say here, commission. Commission. Those commissions, there is the accepted and ceded. So, commission accepted and commissions ceded. Ceded. So, remember, accepted is payable while ceded is receivable. So, accepted is a percentage. Oh, well, some of the percentage of what? Where is what is the percentage rate? Check note number four. Check note four. They said five percent of the premiums. So this is five percent accepted. You accept to pay. Is it the, the two of them relate to re, reinsurance? The commission here is with the reinsurance. See, we have we have many insurance in Kenya. We have many. I love to talk about premiums. We have a lot of money. We have many tension. We have the commission. So these two relate to reinsurance firms. So accepted, you pay based on premiums you have received. So it is five percent times re. Insurance, insurance, premiums received. Well, this one is based on what you have received from the insurance. They give you premiums, you pay them commission. Then seeded, seeded, they are saying it's also 5%, so it will be. 5% times reinsurance, reinsurance premiums paid. You have all the figures under premium, so you just give me the figures. They are here, all of them are here. So give me this, give me that, give me that, give me that one. So I want us to move together. Accepted, you accept to pay based on the premium you have received from reinsurance. So when we come back here, from reinsurance, premiums received, we received 12, we received eight. To Namarudishia Mukono. So give me 5% of 12 and 5% of eight. 5% of 12 and 5% of 800. Sixty and forty. So this is fifty. This is forty. Thank you. Then, see that you receive based on the premiums you have given them. You give them premiums on a fair commission. So premiums paid eight hundred. Eight hundred very up about the forty. The rate is the same. So this is forty. Then five percent or five hundred. You are going to how much will that be? 25. So this is 25. So now, um, so now, check here. Accepted, you are paying. See that you are receiving. When you check it keenly, the receipts are less than the payments. We have paid more. So what I can do, I can offset. I can use the income. This is income. See that is an income to reduce my liabilities like that. So I remain here with 
20. I remain here with 15 as an expense. So total omission outflow. That is outflow. Because the payments are more than the receipts. So I've used the receipts to reduce the payments. Don't get confused there. I've used the receipt, the receipts to reduce the payments. So the 20 and 15 the expense of the university, their liabilities to be settled. Their liabilities to be settled. Thank you. Finally, in this revenue account, you bring other expenses. Other expenses. Ume i i mumbai kupanda miti ni kwa serious. Ni mwa na pata chief ame ame chief wa ushago ame ni a message. That please come. Your family has not come for the trees. So government has supplied, I was not aware, the government has supplied trees to all chief camps. So come on a muti after class, we tap up chief, the nearest chief. Chief what? Here. Chukwe miti. Akini. Yes, what exactly at five percent? The exact, the exact, what exactly at the five percent? Yes, what exactly? Because I want to gauge to see whether someone will will answer. What exactly on the five percent see that? Yes, I want to know what you want to know. The result of 25 months. Someone, can you explain to, to Madam Jacinta how you got, not just give me many pairs of figures, that figure of 25. How did you get 25%? How did you get 25, sorry? How did you get the 25 of CNA? That is what Jacinta is asking. But Jacinta, are you being sincere because if you can know where your quarter came from, you should also know where the 25 is coming from. But I would just want to see someone telling you that. Then, in a song, 5% of premiums paid of fire. So, Jacinta, it was here. See that you receive based on what you have paid. So, this one here. 5% uh, of 800 is 40. Then 5% of 500 is the one which gave us 25. So, Jacinta confirm that you are okay now. Very good. So we can proceed. We can proceed. Other expenses, listen to this. The expenses you bring here are expenses which relates purely to the revenue department. It must relate to marine and fire. If it is not specific to marine and fire, it will go to the profit account. You don't, you don't have to capture it there. Thank you. Uh, may you repeat the explanation of seated and accepted? Based on income and payment, or 
you see, accepted, these are terminologies they use for the right, accepted commission. I'm not going to say that it will be the for Elysian and the Lord. Honor. Let's say this is Kenyari. Kenyari is the reinsurance firm. Then we have mutual effect in Ayota and any insurance. This is a kind of giving you which you call here. Which give me an example of any insurance firm of your choice. Any which you want. Any insurance firm? CIC. Yes. So we have CIC. Uh, now, Una, we work. That's how we king. Una, Buddha king, Alekuja Kenya, found. So this is king. King, Alekuja Kenya. King, Alekuja Kenya, CIC. Those are small, small things. But there is likelihood. The foreign investor, King, Alekuja Kenya, Alekuja So King, Alekuja Kenya, and I want to ensure one, two, three. Kenyari will not turn out of the, the king or the foreign investor. What they will do, they will take up that business. But by law, reinsurance firm is not allowed to insure individuals. They insure insurance firms. So what Kenyari will do, they will take that premium from this foreign investor. Let's say the premium is 50 million. The whole amount, what I can see, see, 50 million. When I transfer the whole amount, when I should go, they transfer to the insurance firm. So they will insure that amount to an insurance firm because when the compliance audit is done, then they realize the insurance firm is insuring individuals. The consequences can be very bad to that insurance firm. It is not permitted by the regulators and even by law. So they will not turn off. Otherwise, I need to find a insurance to insure yourself. They will not turn you off. But most likely, uh, what I can do, I can go to the next one. 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 So, CIC, so let's say our books is for CIC. CIC has received premiums. When you receive premiums, you can receive a corner for a career. What do you decide for the Nape and what do you give them in return? They brought us business. So what do you give them in return? What are we giving in return? When I bring you business right now, what do you give me back in return? Yes, you give me commission. So you see the commission is being paid. So CIC is paying Kenya B. But the question will be based on what? Based on the premiums they have given us. You give us 50, we give you 5%. So accepted is a percentage of the premiums you have received. So I'll pay you commission which based on the premiums which we have received from you people. So I hope accepted is okay. Allow me to bring um, to bring the concept of CDEN. So CDEN, let's say we have um, we have KQ. KQ have decided to issue all their planes not with CIC direct. Every month they are paying premiums of 100 million just in the event of risk for currents. Airport, airport in Pichomeca, Una, please allow me to respond to this call. Uh, sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, Nico Baza, 11th floor. Yes, 11th floor, kindly. 
uh, sorry for that. So KQ has ensured their plans with CIC in the event of risk of currency in compensators. CIC is 100 million. Now in case it is a decade, they can even close. So what they can do, they also reinsure. So when I should go up, see your time, part of the 100, when I say my 50, what I get for reinsurance. Kiki Umana, we share, we share the risk. So Kenya Lee, remember Kenya is not the only reinsurance fund in Kenya. There are so many. We have so many reinsurance funds. So if we give them business, they need to give us commission. So Kenya Lee will give back CIC commission. Now that is commission C level. So they will receive, we receive based on what we have paid. You receive that commission based on premiums you are giving them. So premiums we pay to the insurance to spread the risk. Lakini ile ingine tunapokea premiums kutoka kwao is when they get a client who has approached them directly. So, Gashini, confirm that now you are somehow better with the explanation. I think opening it that way can make quite sense. Very well. Apokwa perfect is now very good. All right, so allow me to wind up the other expenses. So other expenses, other expenses, which ones are they? Can you tell me the ones you are seeing from the trial balance? Which ones are you seeing? The expenses which I want to bring here. Which expenses are you seeing, ladies and gentlemen? Management, joy, management, management, management. Where is management? Yes, there is management down there. Management expenses. Management expenses. So management expenses. Uh, 653, 655, 80. Uh, audit fees. Where is the audit fees? No. Is the audit fees applicable here? No, 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 no. It is not. Audit fees cannot come here. Budget, yes. So, Gashingi, why it can't come? Unana in the lump sum. Come on, lump sum, it means. It is not that going to, we want the expenses which are marine and fire. The ones which are not, they are not in marine fire, they are going to the profit account. They are general for the entire organization. So for you to, they are fine. So bad debt, bad debt, I agree. This is 170, 120. Copy my answers at the always. 170, 120. Any other? Mm -hmm. Any other? Any other? Which you can see? I think there is nothing. Neither two. Only those two. So, the total other expenses, we call them the total unallocated. Total and um, allo no, not unallocated, allocated, sorry. Total allocated cost. Total allocated costs. So allocated cost is 820 is 700. Then call it B. B. So you will come here and say, you say, 
underwritten, underwritten contractual contract, sorry, underwritten contract service margin, underwritten contract service margin to P and L to profit and loss is going to be the gross revenue which is A minus B minus C minus D. So I want you to do for me that. That is the end of the revenue accounts. So I want you to do that for me. So you take for you start with Marie, take A minus B minus C minus D for the two of them, then you give me the answers.
तो बेटू पीगा अब बिल्कुल चिंता नहीं करना है कोई आदमी बेटू पीगा बेटू पीगा टेन फोर्टी एटीन फिफ्टीन टेन फोर्टी एटीन फिफ्टीन आह लेट्स गो टू द पी एंड एल इफ देर इस नो क्वेश्चन द रिक्वायर्ड रोमांस टू we go to required Roman two profit and loss account. So right there, table insurance. So you can have two columns. So you come here and say, um, insurance revenue. So insurance revenue from marine. From marine, we have bought ten ten forty. Then from fire, we have gotten 1815. So total, we are talking of 1828, uh, sorry. We are talking of 2855. So how about? How about, how about? So that is the insurance revenue. Then now you will bring insurance, insurance service results, insurance service results. So the service results is where by now we have other income. I saw another one income here. Can you check on the credit side if we are yes there is one income i'm seeing which one are you seeing which one are you seeing there is one income on the credit side which one is this Yeah, thank you. There is the investment income. So investment income, investment income. On the credit side, it is equal. Uh, investment income, it is 280, check to confirm. 
280. 280. Then, uh, other expenses, unallocated, sorry. You need to call it other unallocated expenses. Other unallocated expenses. Other unallocated expenses. So, I think Kamaile will put on the pair as a villain. That one. The audit fees, the ones which were general. The ones which were general. Uh, investment is an asset. It, the same investment that is an asset, what we bring as income is investment income. So fine. Uh, so you can see audit fees somewhere. There is audit fees. Audit fees is to party. Then we have director's fees. Director's fees. 495. Then we have depreciation, depreciation, we have 905. There is nothing, if there is something you come across, please allow us to know. But if there is none, give me the total. If there is none, then help me with the Total. Still forty. So sixteen forty. You subtract to get operating profit before tax, or just operating profit will be how much? Twenty eight plus two eighty minus that. What do you get? Fourteen ninety five. Fourteen ninety five. Then you bring insurance, finance, finance expenses. So there was none in this question. So what you get, what you get is the insurance profit before tax. So profit before tax is 1495. 1495. Then you less income tax. Income tax, check note number six. The last note, thirty percent. So give me thirty percent of fourteen ninety five.
448.5. So profit as a tax. Profit as a tax. Operating the profit for the year after tax will be how much? Ten forty six point five. That is done. So that is how they appear, and that should appear. Any question? All right, that is perfect. So we go to the statement of financial position. So write the heading, Tango, what, what statement of financial position? Now you appreciate the parents quite why. Come out the work is make up. What could have happened? What do you think? Because can you say that our speed we are moving slowly slow? Can you say we are slowing the coverage? And if not, what do you think could have happened to us since we don't? I think this semester was very short. All right, thank you, Claudette. I'm going to go ahead Let's start. So the standard that respected us to stop separating the current what was we just tell me. Tell me here, Arthur. Tell me their assets, and you start with the liquid ones, the most liquid. They're just in the EFOs. Say that you see. It's dangerous. But now, I do know option. We have to try it out. But I have confidence. All right, so assets, I want us to start with the most liquid, most so cash. So just check where we have cash, we only have number two and nine. We have cash or bank. Are you seeing any bank or cash, kindly? Uh -huh. I'm trying to check, Sion. Are you seeing any? Bank balance, 110. Oh yes, who could you? Bal bank balance and cash in hand, 110. And then, then uh, any sundry, there is sundry data 
But in this new standard, I put on a data. I want to apply for a data. Data is done. Data should just be there and earn premiums when you deliver premium. But fine. But in the new standard, I put on that seven that you need to be a bank. So trade receivables. Trade receivables. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Then we have Unana is a commission seeded. Commission seeded is a current asset. It is receivable. Commission seeded. Check your workings. It was 40 plus 25. So total you report 65. The outstanding premiums, check additional information number one. Check additional information number one. So uh, outstanding premiums, outstanding premiums, premiums on 31st March, on 31st March 2014. You add them. Outstanding premiums are the premiums you have not received, so they are receivable. They are receivable. So check note one, 15 plus 700. So this is 15 plus 700. That is 22. That is 22. That is 22. Then you can bring non current investment. I saw investment somewhere. Yeah, there is investment in shares. So, investment in shares. Investment in shares, I'm seeing, I hope it is 1500. 1500. Then, Free old property. We have free old property. Free old property is uh, forty two hundred. Then motor vehicles, net book value thirty five. So the assets are already at net book value. That is why I'm not subtracting the depreciation. So that's right. Then we have machinery and equipment, 15. Then furniture, 13. I don't see anything else which we should consider. Yeah. So can you add for me this asset? But don't close, just add. Can you add for me those total assets?
total assets 15105 15105 Ni swali na issue kuna figa figa moja ikikuwa captured vizuri sio kama ni swali ama where do we deduct the depreciation you can't deduct Hilda already the assets are at net book value so they have subtracted so the schedule is just the expense for the year so we are not subtracting it anywhere we just charge at an expense and that is it it has already been captured as all the assets have been stated at net book value so I have brief for me liabilities here yeah? Bring for me liabilities. So I hope we have trade pair holes. If yes, but Hilda, do we have trade pair holes? Yes, sundry creditors. Check sundry creditors on the credit side. So sundry creditors. Salary creditors, 330. Sure. I think that's what we'll see. Salary creditors, 330. Then commissions accepted. Commissions accepted. It was 60 plus. Was it 60 plus 40? I'm proud. So you can remind me. Was it 60 and 40? Check. There is a concern about the number of people who come here. Yes, then that is one hundred. Then there was liability. The the one the provision which we made. The provision we made the hundred percent the what the what the liability for the remaining coverage. So liability. How much it was what and what? I don't have the figures. Check for me in your revenue account. The one which you made the provision, 100% and 50%. What and what? What plus what? Someone to help me the figures. Fifty six and nineteen. Thank you. Giving us seventy five. I hope so. Seventy five. I just camera. So, like in the may adjust when they want the apple. Check there. Is that okay? The bottom. Up to there. Good. Then we go to the other side. Current tax. Bring the tax. That the tax which we charge 30%. 30%. The tax. Now, so current tax current tax we have got it there four point eight point five. Put any other liability? Yeah, there is any other liability. I don't think there is. No claims. Okay, right. Outstanding claims at the end of the year. Outstanding claims on 31st December, but not December March. So outstanding claims 
check note number two. 750 for 80. 750 for 80. That one is for the part. I hope so. If it's okay, then time is all. You are. You are. How much, how much? 96.08.5. Now, plus from your asset, then you report to us total. Total max assets. You want to come up with a person. I'm going to put the person I want to work here. So when you subtract, what did you get? Fifty four ninety six point five. I finance by so how did they finance those net assets? Bring the equity components. So the equity components I can see ordinary share capital, share premium. So ordinary. Yeah, capital. Ordinary share capital. Three thousand. Then there is share premium, one thousand. The premium one thousand retained earnings retained earnings retained earnings in the books on your medical profit and loss account the four fifty. So you take that for fifty plus. Check profit for the year in your profit account. In your profit account. So in your profit account, we made a net profit of 1046.5. What is for 50 plus that? The good for 50 plus this should be well, the other one to think. You give me the answer. For 50 plus 1046 comes to. Fourteen ninety six. Fourteen ninety six point five. Therefore, the total there is nothing else to balance with the assets. 
Are we in order? Are we in order of balancing? Yes. So it balances the total net assets of 5496.5. Disclosures. Disclosures, I only want to disclose one. The directors, the directors proposed to pay dividends of 10%. Proposed to pay dividends of 10%. That is not number five. 10% on the outstanding, outstanding, ordinary, share capital. The capital, then also another disclosure, which you can give us, No risk, actually, there is no risk adjustment we made. Why don't you stop there? What I wanted to bring into your attention, there is a change in INS number one of publication that proposed dividends. Pro you know, when you propose, like when you're closing the year, would I leave after AGM year next year? So, proposed dividends, we should give them as a disclosure moving forward. We provide disclosure, but we don't recognize them in the books. What we used to do initially, we used to, to argue that since they have been proposed, there is intention to pay, then we bring it here as a liability. We bring it here as a liability, then we reduce, we reduce the retained earnings. That one has been thrown away in the dust. We don't, we don't recognize the proposed dividends. We provide them as disclosure to the financial statements. So there is question two there. The concept is just the same. It is requesting you to prepare a revenue account, a check required from until revenue account, then statement of financial position. So instead of that question, they don't want the profit account. So you can do profit account just as a working. It will be a working, but in exam, it will be a waste time. Just do the revenue account, go to the balance sheet, then the profit will be your balancing figure. The return damage, you take that one plus the balancing figure, then you are done. So you will use the profit as the balancing figure. Don't waste time doing the entire P and L as a, as a working. Just, just use the return earnings as your balancing figure in exam. So you can you can practice with that question to the pair apple. Otherwise, what I've given you to the best of my knowledge is sufficient. Is sufficient for, for that standard, both the notes and uh, the presentation. You just revise in that one. So when in our next class, reconstruction and the organization. Reconstruction and reorganization. Reconstruction and reorganization of capital structure. So that is it. That is it. That is it. I'm checking something.
Sawa. So thank you so much. Do have a good planting this day. We shall meet in our next class, but really.